Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video I have this uh, Toyota CHR hybrid. This is a 1.8 obviously petrol and it's a 2018 model and I'm gonna be changing the oil the oil filter in it. I'm also gonna top up some screen wash fluid um, and uh, we can also have a look at the coolant the coolant level and the percentage of antifreeze so as far as I'm aware there is like two tanks here of coolant this coolant here for the engine and this other one which is for the hybrid system we can have a visual check of the level and we can also use a little gadget to check the percentage of antifreeze that's in it uh, obviously which prevents that liquid from freezing um, so I'm just going to start with uh, I'm just going to show you the oil filter I'm going to use for this and also I'm going to use 0W20 oil um, in this engine and uh, this one here 0W20 and this uh, I couldn't find a manual for it but I've done a little bit of research and uh, most places are showing that this car takes 4.2 liters um, luckily we have a dipstick so we can gradually fill up the oil so i'm gonna put maybe three and a half liters and see where the oil is in the dipstick so not the end of the world if you if we haven't got the exact figures but uh, because we can use the dipstick um, so let me show you the filter okay so the oil filter i'm gonna be using is this one here, the E210H, is make Hengst. I think Blueprint, that's one as well, which is that part number there, ADD62109. But uh, just make sure you get the correct filter for your car, because uh, originally I got delivered a metal filter. So whether some of these have a metal filter, I'm not sure. I thought most of these other ones have uh, the paper one. But for whatever reason, I got to leave it the wrong one. Uh, anyway, I've got the right one now. So uh, let's get the car up now. And uh, we'll drain the oil and change the filter from underneath. Um, another thing, actually, to open the um, filter housing, the oil filter housing, you're going to need one of these. Um, the little housing there has to be undone. And the size of this, I mean, these are quite easy to, to find. All, all you need to do is uh, type on Google um, Toyota CHR uh, oil filter socket, and this will come up. This is specifically for these cars, for the Prius, for, the, for this one, um, the CT200H, and all of those have the same housing and it's only one size and that size is some something around 65 um it's a 65 socket size so right so i'm just going to start with um filling up the screen wash fluid that goes in this container here with the little blue cover and if you get that open that's where I'm going to put some screen wash fluid. Now this screen wash fluid, I bought it uh, concentrated and I mixed it myself, but uh, you can buy it ready mixed. So that way you don't have to be messing around with mixing it. And we just pour it in there. But again, as I always say on my videos, um, I wouldn't recommend just putting water in there because water will freeze during winter and then you're not going to have any water coming out of the jets. Just when you need it the most, you're in the motorway and you have no water to clean your windscreen. So better use the proper stuff, which is not going to freeze. And also I don't recommend mixing water with washing up liquid because it also freezes as washing up liquid doesn't have the uh, consistency of that fluid not to freeze basically right at the moment the car is on because i had it running 
uh, to warm up the engine a little bit so when we drain the oil it's a little bit easier uh, to flow out basically it flows out a bit easier so i'm just going to switch it off and then we can check the coolant okay engine's off now this is the gadget i use to check the percentage antifreeze it's getting a little bit old sometimes it's not breathing as good as uh, i would want to but still works now uh, if your engine's been running for a long time uh, it could be very hot so just be careful when opening this little cap here they are made for safety but obviously they can fail as well and uh, you don't want any boiling hot water jumping on your face so i always open it pressing it down a little bit and slowly that's my method so that's how I do it and then we have I can put that in there get some fluid out and that is going to measure or it's going to show me at which temperature this liquid would freeze but sometimes it needs to suck water properly right okay so that's showing around minus 32 degrees so if the if the outside temperature reaches 35 degrees this liquid would freeze um, so that is a very good temperature um, antifreeze uh, percentage there because i am in the uk and we haven't had those temperatures as such uh, maximum i think we had maybe minus 15 so if your if this was at minus five then there is a risk that this can freeze in winter so that's why we make sure we have a good level of antifreeze percentage there now we can close that so i'm happy with that no issues there and then so I'm just going to shine a light on this tank because that helps helps me see there is fluid in this tank. You can see the pink color in there. Um, that is a, a good way of checking your fluid. And then on the side here, you have a low and full mark. So I can see that's the full mark there. So we expect the fluid to be around there. This one I can see it's a little bit on the a little bit higher than that again not an issue it could be just because i've been running the engine and that expanded a little bit but uh, if you were on the low side if your coolant was down here you may want to top it up to the full so you'll have to check your manual or you can call the parts department the toyota and find out what the best uh, coolant would be for your car uh, what grade and what not there's so many different types now there's you know there's blue green red yellow and no not yellow I don't think. <laughs> there's yellow actually uh, but you can then top it up um, so that is good i'm happy with that and then check this other one here as well again shine a light you can see the full and the low marks there this is at the full and you can also check again just carefully opening this so any pressure is released you can check the percentage here as well again that's showing me around i hold it straight minus 35 36 so happy with that as well this little gadget also obviously um, lets you see the fluid in here. You can see it's nice and clear, it's pink. It's pink and it's nice and clear. It's not uh, contaminated. It doesn't have oil or any other substances that may concern you, or in this case, me. So I'm actually happy with those, with the coolant. It's nice and clear, pink and it's got a good percentage and this locks into place you can hear it locking 
like so, same as the other one. Right, with that done, we can move on to our oil and oil filter. So I'm gonna pull the dipstick here, just leave it there, and I'm going to open the oil filler cap, which can be tight. But I can use one of these to open that. And then I'm just going to leave that there and I'm going to leave that there. That just allows a little bit of air into the system while we drain the oil. So there's no resistance from vacuum or whatnot. So I'll get the car up and we drain the oil and change the filter. Okay, so looking at the car from underneath here, I'm just looking from the back towards the front. We have this cover with some 10 mil screws we'll remove those and uh, we'll get access to the filter housing here so it's only uh, four of those and I got one more here Remove that little cover, just put it away. And uh, here's the sun plug bolt, and here's the filter housing. So let's open that first. That's a 14 mil. Uh, make sure you get an oil pan to catch the oil. Right, got my 14 mil socket there, so I can uh, get that bolt open. So that wasn't tight at all, which is good. 25 newton meters or so to tighten this, 25, 27, depends on the car, but also remember if the engine's been running, that oil can be very hot. Now, <laughs> that oil looks very clean, to be fair. Um, Because this car hasn't really covered that many miles, um, so the thing is, uh, it's a car we're preparing for service uh, because it, it's it's gonna be sold, um, and uh, we just need to make sure it has been serviced and whatnot. So I can see that it has. Um, anyway, I'm sure the video will help somebody even though we are maybe losing out here because that oil is so nice and clean. Nevertheless, um, we're gonna change it now. And while that is draining, we can also tackle the filter. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Make sure your uh, the little washer comes out with the bolt. Okay, so while the oil is draining, um, I've got my ratchet and the socket in the filter housing there you will see how it fits these three openings fit in between these places here on the on the housing specifically to give it some grip and then we just have to open that it might be a little bit tight but it's not gonna be too tight again that normally just gets tight into 25 meters or so. And uh, there will be oil coming out of there. So make sure your oil pan is sitting under the area as well. Right, well that's out. 
so the filter there just usually slides out like so just comes out so I'm just leaving this here draining a little bit while everything is draining and then we can prepare our oil filter the little housing change the o-ring and whatnot so while the oil is still draining we can just uh, take care of the house in here so I just gave that a clean and a bit of a, a wipe for this we can remove the big o-ring here and um, we have a new one in the kit so in your oil filter kit you might find these things two o-rings and uh, that little thing there which in this case scenario for this particular car you're not going to use this or that so in other cars there is uh, this cover here you can undo this cover this bit here and then drain the oil you can sort of put that in there and direct the oil out and uh, and then you change the o-ring in there but on this one we don't really have that we don't do that so i've got my new o-ring and uh, i'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, multi-purpose grease around this uh, o-ring here you can also just uh, put a bit of the oil that you're going to use and just uh, lubricate that little the o-ring there and the reason i do that normally is because um, when we get this back in and we're screwing it on this uh, o-ring will slide nicely into the housing without getting uh, stuck or ripped or damage so the grease kind of helps a little bit for it to sit a bit better and uh, I'm sure many people haven't don't do that or never done it in their lives and they're always been okay so um, you do it whichever way you wish to do it um, so there's no specific rule here and um, now we're pretty much ready to fit this back But before, fitting it back, maybe just uh, give this area here a little wipe. Nothing too crazy. Anyway, we'll clean it. We'll clean it after we fit these things back. So now we have a filter there. So we can put it in by hand. I always put it in by hand as much as I can before using the wrench. That way I know it's going in the correct way, straight, and it's not at an angle. So we don't damage the thread. If you put it at an angle and you force it with the ratchet, um, you'll damage the thread and then it's going to leak. <laughs> and then you're going to be stuck. So let's put that in there. And as I said, so that's not sitting properly. It's got to sit properly. There we are. Now, uh, don't over tighten this. If you have a torque wrench, just set it to about 25 newton meters and use that. Okay. Now, you can, uh, this is a sun plug bolt. You can go ahead and replace this uh, washer. Um, you could use a copper washer as well. Um, if you haven't got one, a new one, just inspect the old one. And uh, if, it's, if it looks okay, it's not ripped or damaged, then you can reuse it. It's not the end of the world. Just uh, change it next time around. And again, put that on there. Tighten that 
again not a lot of force 25 newton meters or so will do the job between 25 and 30 depends on the car some cars are actually something like 19 newton meters but these days a lot of newer cars have a plastic um some plug so they're even less than they're like 10 newton meters or or less anyway that is done that is done i'm gonna clean the area here a little bit make sure there's no uh, oil stains around because that way next time we we come back to do this we know that there's uh this oil if there's any oil it's not coming from our job so it could be an oil leak or whatever if there is oil but at least we know we cleaned it so i'm just using some uh, brake cleaner here to rinse the area it's really good for rinsing um, oil now i'm going to put the cover here and lower the car and put some oil okay we're up here now um the oil goes in here so i'm just gonna get a funnel so i can i can aim in the correct place try not to pour the oil everywhere it's happened to me so <laughs> we learn with experience and so i have my zero w20 here and I'm just going to pour the 4.2 litres, as I said. Okay, now I'm going to check the dipstick, see where the oil is at. And uh, if you look at your manual, if you have one... <laughs> I don't know where mine is. Um, this is the minimum here. This is the maximum here. So we're aiming to be somewhere around the max or in this case, maybe above the max. If you were checking your oil routinely, um, you obviously want to be, you want to be somewhere between here and here, but hopefully somewhere, it'll be somewhere here or somewhere here. If your oil was down here and you're not due to service it, then you want to top up a little bit to put it up a bit um, so today right now we should be somewhere a little bit above this max mark and after you run the engine the oil will go um, in there it will be a little bit lower because um, some of that oil will stay in the oil filter housing Okay, so if you if you look at the sort of shiny area there, you can see it's just above the dot. It's somewhere here. Maybe a little bit difficult to see, but uh, just about. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna fit that back in there. I'm just going to get the engine started. Okay, so no oil pressure lights coming on, nothing like that. Um, all seems good. And uh, now I can check the oil here again. So first wipe it. Obviously, ideally you wanna wait a while before you check the oil. So you make sure all the oil is settled into the sump. But uh, for the purpose of the video, it's going to be accurate enough anyway. It's gonna give us an idea where the oil is but sometimes um, right, 
Let's try that again. Okay, a little bit difficult to tell because um, <laughs> the dipstick is a little bit, uh, it's, it's got some oil in it, but I can't see that the major amount of oil is at the max. The mark, the mark of the oil is at the max. In this area here, you can see it's more full because you can also see a bit of oil in here, but that's just what we're pulling from this dipstick hole. So like I said, ideally you wanna check your oil after leaving it a couple of hours or so, let the engine cool down a little bit and then check it. Um, so having said that, it's pretty much finished here. So I hope the video helps. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. So thank you for watching.